Thanks very much, Jennifer. All right. And thanks for everyone, to everyone for coming out today. Are we ready to uh, talk about the hard to reach? Yes. Everyone have some? Yes. All right, cool. So I'm the, uh, I'm the data nerd guy, as you figured. So I'm going to, yeah, give me some of that woo. Yes. Best session ever, for me anyway. Uh, so data, I'm going to walk you through some of the data on the hard to reach. We actually have a lot of it. Uh, we've looked at it from several angles, several sources. Give me a sense of like what's realistic for you to expect as you get sort of trickier and trickier. Uh, so, so we'll end up there. We'll also start with kind of a, a generic ways of thinking sort of the easiest to reach, mid to reach, and uh, the really tricky ones. And just to make sure we're in the right room here, real quick, someone throw out something they're hoping to know, hoping to learn today while we're here. Okay, how to reach underrepresented populations in your community. Perfect. You're in the right place. Yes? How to reach foreign born populations. How to reach foreign born. Ooh, yeah, there's a theme. Anyone else? Yes? How to reach um, older citizens who may not be on the internet. How to reach older citizens who may not be on the internet. We have a little quiz question on that. It's kind of interesting. It may surprise you. Yes, one in the back. Really similar. How to reach disconnected people. How to reach disconnected people. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is, yes? Ooh, ooh, the other side of the quiz question that's coming up. Start thinking about which side you might pick on this one. All right, terrific. And yes, and one more? What makes a survey statistically valid? What makes a survey statistically valid? Okay, oh, I think we'll touch on that a little bit too. Yes? All the above, <laughs> All the, but being a trusted source. All be the trusted. above, but be trusted. You want, how do you trust your government? This is terrific. Yeah, so after I go through all the nerdy data stuff, we're going to have some really nice uh, lessons and, and on trust and, uh, and great, great stories from Bratton, too. So I'm excited for that part. If we can just get through my part, you know, it'd be great. <laughs> yes, one more. Sorry. How to use what you, what you learn effectively. How to use what you learn effectively? Yeah. Wrong session. <laughs> 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 but good news, we got one tomorrow. I know. Okay. Wait, are you a plant? <laughs> All right, come tomorrow. Yeah, so tomorrow, uh, the Davenport Institute. Who's heard of the Davenport Institute? Anyone? Awesome. Yeah, woo! Davenport. So uh, Davenport Institute is great for engagement. That's their specialty. And uh, Davenport uh, folks and I will be doing a joint session tomorrow where we talk about the ultimate engagement guide. So in other words, you know, what do you need for what? How do you make sense of all this chaos of tools out there? Sound good? All right. All right, so let's jump in. Hopefully this was close. Hard to engage certain members, wondering why maybe, want to do better, looking for some tips and tricks, about right? Yeah. All right, cool, let's roll. All right, so I'm gonna start out with a hard, who is hard to reach? So here's that quiz I teased you on. Okay, so who's harder to reach? The older folks because of technology challenges, they're disconnected, right? Or younger because of interest limitations? All right, let's just real quick, A, who's got A? Older people, okay, who's got B? Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, you don't. I'll just skip ahead because you you see something here, don't you? Interest matters, doesn't it? Okay. So let's start by thinking about who's easiest to reach. Here's your community. Who do you hear from in your community without even asking? So easy. <laughs> the hate. So right here, right? Okay. Sometimes the people that have really have a good pet project, right? Is it uh, maybe this guy? Like. How much, how much effort is it to hear from this guy? Not so, not so much, yeah, okay. And of course, uh, what does that tell you when you hear from that guy that obviously everyone hates everything in your community, right? Right, what, well, I mean, could be this, right? Could, could be he's the outlier, crazy, but you kind of don't know. And you do know what it feels like, however. It sucks <laughs> getting yelled at. I became a public official about nine years ago just so I could experience that firsthand, primarily, <laughs> getting yelled at by people. Um, so if you think about the scale of degrees of difficulty, this is the easiest. It's no effort. You're going to get it. It's noise. Right? It doesn't tell you anything, those folks. Make sense so far? Painfully familiar? OK. So who's next easiest to reach? We use the word engagement a lot. So here's a case study on engagement that we uh, were lucky to be part of. A bunch of best thing you do is get a team of grad students doing work for you <laughs> uh, out of Harvard. So they had a, a community center, and they had a meeting. 
right? In-person meeting, and people come to a meeting. Anyone think of challenges to attending a meeting, maybe? Child care? Transportation. Transportation, another one? Multiple jobs. Multiple jobs, right? Yeah. So all you people who just said interest, by the way, I didn't hear that. We call it give a crap, technically. That's the, but that's a factor. So uh, as you'll see, this is what happened. They actually, the grad students tallied every comment and scored everything at this meeting. And it turned out that at this meeting, the most important things they wanted were study, meeting, event space, and health and social services. Okay. I mean, picture yourself, right? You just have a meeting. You have data. Feels like data, doesn't it? And what's the next thing you might want to do? We're going to do some, some more engagement to reach people who couldn't come to a meeting. Is that fair? Why not? So they had not created an online survey, pushed it out, social media and other channels. And look. Same, right? Isn't that cool? Data. <laughs> Isn't that cool? No. Ah, ha, ha. But it looks cool, right? I mean, if I show this at a meeting, that's going to be pretty compelling. Look, it's a total match. Okay. Health and, so and social services, study meeting, best way. Turns out we did a scientific survey. Wow. wow. Yeah, so the two top ones were actually at the bottom. And one that was way at the bottom was actually at the top. Okay. Because of... Demographics? Well, there were some differences. So the social media survey, you know, had even fewer men <laughs> than the meeting. And we'll, I'll show you some data on that later. Uh, but that wasn't it. It wasn't age either. So the meeting and the survey had hugely different ages, for example, which is what you might think it was. It was the hidden variable, self-selection, interest, right? So engagement is a way to get input from the next easiest group of people besides your spontaneous complainers. So what's the answer to this quiz? Got a guess? Interest or technology? A again? No A. OK, B. Hey, we learned it. All right, cool. Yeah, it's self-interest, special interest. We've heard you've used the term, right? OK. So on the next degree of difficulty, we've gone from noise, which is garbage, to engagement. By the way, you can get useful data from engagement. You can get ideas you didn't have. Facts you didn't know, questions you hadn't asked, right? But uh, you do not want percentages. Do not look at percentages when you have these meetings or online surveys. Okay. So now what's the next harder to reach? So imagine that we're all pitching in five bucks for pizza. I promised you pizza, right? Okay, use this in your colleagues sometimes who, who don't have trouble understanding this um, importance of representative people. So you have to figure out which toppings to get. You ready? 10,000 people. See this org chart? It's your org chart, but with pizza. Is this, who would, who would order what they want? <laughs> who'd be tempted, though? Just a little. Yeah? OK. Doesn't work? No? OK. How about I ask your friends what you want, what, what they want? Is that still? No, no? OK. Yeah, in, in the government context, those are kind of corrupt, right? <laughs> uh, what if we call a meeting? Have a meeting? <laughs> okay. Uh, read social media posts. That's what we wanted to do. Yeah? No? Got a lot of, a lot of shaking heads. Um, I know. Online engagement form. Right? See if we can get the Friends of Pineapple Pizza to show up and kind of do their thing, share with their friends. And, did you see the problem with that? Okay. Online survey. Oops, we just covered that one. Now it's the anchovy people who are really well organized. Okay. So which of those work? You wouldn't do any of those because you're not like a bad person, right? <laughs> you know they're bad, yeah. Uh, all those have that unrepresentative problem because who's going to attend those? The people who are most interested. They're the easiest. What's the right answer? Take everyone's order, right? Wouldn't that be cool if you could? And then everyone gets pizza they want, everyone gets pizza they like. That's hard to get that kind of outreach. Second best, scientific survey, as someone asked about earlier. This is how we know that anchovies are America's least favorite pizza topping. Because someone actually took the time to go out and do the outreach. Rather than letting them come to us, someone had went out and picked regular people and said, hey, what's your favorite pizza topping? Hey, what's your least favorite? So think of it as like an intercept survey. It's kind of a technical nerd word. But I just basically start picking people in this room and maybe asking them, about something other than their interest in going to a hard to reach session. 
Because that everyone's self-selected for, right? What if I ask you about your pizza topping? Have you self-selected for that? No. All right, who likes, who likes anchovies? It's OK to raise your hands and like anchovies. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it like I got a, I got a this. I got a wave. Yeah, they're not bad. They're, they're, they're hated on too much. Who likes pepperoni? OK, yeah, see? And that's probably a representative sample, actually, because this isn't a pizza convention or a session on why anchovies are awesome. See the difference? OK. That's how you get a scientific survey. You need a sample that is not correlated, not related to the topic. But it's hard to get that representative input. So uh, just to give you an example, right? it's easy to get those compliance that we talked about. Nothing but compliance is an example from Southern California City. Everyone hates our parks. Here's what the survey actually looked like, the scientific survey. Wow, right? Who are they hearing from? 0.3% of their community. What did it feel like, by the way? 100% of their community. Yeah. And uh, there's another, just to, to show you the both angles there, sex ed curriculum. The haters showed up and the lovers of it showed up, which always strikes me as a little weird. Uh, this is the actual survey they did on a, you know, an online survey platform, SurveyMonkey. Does that look like a bell curve? Does that look like the, the distribution you expect to see in your community? Not really. Yeah, so the trick is, how do you get regular parents to participate in the survey? Right, makes sense? Instead of the most active or activated. Okay, well we, we found out actually the service, uh, the support for this was about 90% actually. So it was a clear go ahead, easy to go. All right, so what's the big difference now between engagement and scientific surveys? This kind of third level of difficulty. Think of engagement as input from people specially interested in a topic. And that can be really useful if you want to hear from tennis players about the tennis courts or um, any other topic where you want to attract the expertise. And you want to ask maybe open-ended questions. You know, who's got any ideas about blank, right? Scientific surveys, though, that's the input from people not especially interested in a topic. Regular folks who you just happen to get data from. And then you can generalize that little sample to your whole community. It's kind of magic. And it's a surprisingly small number of people you need to hear from. Like hundreds is really good. Isn't that crazy? You can figure out what 100 million people think if you have a 100 good sample, 100 size sample. OK, so that's that third level of, of effort. And then the hardest to reach. OK, so now we're going to get into some of these targeted things that we started with, uh, with questions on earlier. Men versus women. Got a graph here showing one group is men, one group is women on reporting as registered voters. Who do you think is more civic minded, folks? Women. 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 Anyone got men? God, shouldn't we be embarrassed? <laughs> Not just for that. I mean, other things too, but for this right now. Okay, well, that was a tricky one, huh? You nailed it. Yeah, and if you're familiar with online participation, also much higher. Uh, when you move much more participation from women than men. Ironically, there's more men on Facebook signed up, but women rule on usage. Okay, voter turnout by age. Another kind of civic metric. What do we think's going on here? Who's gonna be in the red and who's gonna be the green at the top? Red at the bottom. Anyone got a guess how that looks? We got green, one, we think green. The older, okay. So the top is going to be older. Anyone disagree? All right, who thinks top is the oldest? Okay. Who thinks top is the youngest? All right. Who doesn't know, by the way? Because that's <laughs> not sure, don't know is a great answer. Always include it in a questionnaire. Uh, okay. Bingo. And look at that drop. Again, it's like a factor of two almost in the difference. And these, you know, these kind of uh, activities are civic activities, very similar to what you're looking at engagement. All right, so the last one, voter turnout by income. Now you guys, you guys are smart, you would have got this in a second. Well, look at that gap too. This is the last three elections. And again, it, it goes up in a really pretty steep rise. So maybe one and a half to two times harder to get participation as income goes down. Surprising? Not really, right? This is all the questions you asked at the beginning. 
But it's interesting to see the ratio. You know, so it's not 10x harder, but it is maybe twice as hard for this particular variable. OK, uh, this is an interesting one. Now, turn out by race, ethnicity. It's not really clear why pigment would affect voting. But there's something else in here. And as you can see, like white and black is pretty similar. But Hispanic is not. It turns out, and I love the very first question we had here about immigrants and languages, that when you look at these subgroups, it turns out that um, this is a map of, let's just say green is a country that we would consider good and free, and everything else isn't. And I was having a conversation with a guy in Sacramento um, last week, and he, he was saying, hey, how do I reach my, my Russian immigrant population? And I said, and <laughs> I said well, you, they may not want to be reached. <laughs> right? I've, I've been to Central America about 30 times, and again, you know, different countries, a lot of people come here, and the, and the theme, what he said, they said, was we came here to be left alone by our government. So that trust gap is it's basically infinite for certain types of, of immigrants, depending on where they came from. And then you add in the language, it gets even harder. Make sense? Yeah. So that's going to be your trickiest thing. If you're going to be doing outreach, you're going to be doing it in their native language with people they already trust. So that's a trick. OK. All right, so just to kind of put a bow on those numbers, men versus women, 1.1 to 1.5 times harder to get men. Younger, one and a half to two times harder to get younger than older. Poorer, one and a half to two times harder, again, on a scale. And then immigrant, two times and more. I mean, really, it can be pretty much infinite, depending on what you're talking about. Uh, this is the one you want to take a photo of if you were interested in the, those numbers. And the real takeaway here is that if you multiply those things together, you can easily get to 10x harder. So you might have to do 10 times as many postcards, 10 times as many emails, 10 times as many door knocks as what you consider kind of your normal to reach. Okay. Does that make sense? Like a math? Yeah, I was told there'd be no math, right? Almost. OK. Um, so that's the data there. That's the hardest. That's where you need to do that targeted outreach. It's really the extra effort. And if you don't make the extra effort, you're not going to really expect to get much. If you don't do that native language outreach, uh, don't expect a whole lot of people to just sign up in another language. Last thing, my part is, uh, you know, you're probably wondering what your community looks like, right? I'm going to show you where you can get some really good data. There's a basic. Uh, everyone know quick facts, the census? Okay. Good for getting like the basic, you know, one column rundown of your community, median income, things like that. Uh, but there's a much better option out there now that we use all the time. Who's heard of data commons before now? Awesome. There, the session just paid for itself. OK. Data Commons is amazing. So it's user-friendly graphs of all the cool stuff you might want to know about your community. It's a Google project. And it's super easy. Go to Data Commons, Place Explorer, enter your place, and it gives you a summary. Just pick Lake Oswego here. It gives you rankings, your population, your median income, your age. How does it compare to others in your area? Etc. Tons of options. If you click on demographics, like in the red on the right on the left, now you can see your age compared to not just your area but the United States. You can see ah well let's see, Lake Oswego is this going to be harder to reach or easier to reach compared to other communities? Easier because of the age. Yeah. In fact, it gives you breakdowns like by segment. So in this case, you can see Lake Oswego compared to the US, has a lot older in the 55 to 74 area, and a lot younger in the 18 to 24. That might help you plan your, your messaging, right? Especially when you're thinking about different digital channels that different people are on. Helpful? Yeah, OK, cool. So that's awesome. And then if you really want to get advanced, when you get into language and immigration stuff, data.census.gov. Who's used that or heard of that? Yeah, OK, cool. Uh, and that's one where you can find things like language ability to speak. So if you want to do language, spoken at home, ability to speak English, uh, speak English less than very well, for example, is the kind of data you can get. And that's where you might find out that actually your immigrants, if they're second generation, maybe they actually do speak English well, but they still speak their native language. So you might find some interesting stuff there. And uh, you, know, you can see it by Spanish, French, Italian, Asia Pacific, all kinds of breakdowns that are really useful for thinking about how to reach these folks. And know, and know for sure how big a population you actually have. 
All right, that's it. Uh, use this data to understand the size of your hard to reach groups. You got your multiplier effects. Now you can start to put together a strategy. So did you get who is harder to reach and why? Okay, did you dispel some misconceptions for those very few of you who thought older versus younger? Okay. And how to measure these challenges? You have a sense? Maybe you could go back and check out your own community and how much extra effort you're gonna need. All right, excellent. That's my part, we'll be back for discussion. Thank you. Thank you.